Good day, it's Arno Klaassen here from lifewise.co.za and I really want to recommend you to the, to the website to find there lots of free material, books, audios, videos and the reason I, I, I really urge you to go there is not because I want you to be there but because there's stuff that can help you living the, a better life there's stuff there that can help you living the fulfilled life I've been looking for this stuff for, the, for many many years and I always say the proof of the pudding lies in the eating I know what I'm talking about. I've been looking for it. I experience what I'm talking about. I'm not here because I'm a theologian and I need to make some money or whatever. I'm here because I want you to have a better life. To have the ultimate life. To have the only ultimate life. Because there's no other ultimate life of inner peace, inner satisfaction, inner freedom and all these things that God has promised us. And today I want to talk to you about something that's disturbing a lot of Christians along the way and that is how does God visit uh, uh, sins to the next generation? Well, the Bible says that and it's a very serious uh, thing that we need to get an answer to. How does God visit sins to the next generation? And, and, and I've many times had people in my, in my office, you know, especially believers, and they're very concerned because they, they're in a desperate situation. Things are not very nice and, and things are in a crisis and they believe it's because of their father and mother and their grandfather and grandmother that lived an evil life and was part of the Freemasonry and all these things and whatever. And, and all these things is now coming through to them and God is visiting the sins of their uh, forefathers on them. Is that what the Bible is talking about? I don't think so. But if it's not so, let's just look at the Bible. Maybe, maybe the two perspectives that we can look from is the perspective of the, the gospel of sin or the gospel of the kingdom. The, in the gospel of sin, sin is the starting point, the reference point and the focus of everything. But in the gospel of the kingdom... God and the eternal covenant and His heart as a Father, a heart of love, is the reference point, the starting point and the focus of everything. That does not say we're minimizing the sin problem. Please, there's no reason and, and, and there's no way that you're allowed to minimize the sin problem. Hear me clearly. But listen, the sin problem is not the starting point of life. It is not the reference point of God. It is maybe something that overwhelmed us, but it didn't overwhelm God. And nothing changed in God's world because of the fall of man. Yes, and we must come back to the point to see what God is seeing, what God is believing, and what God has in store for us concerning this whole problem, but also concerning what was His eternal purpose for us before the foundation of the world. So here in Exodus 20 verse 1 to 6 is a very interesting verse of Scripture that we all know. And God spoke all these words saying that I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt and out of the house of bondage. Bondage. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall, you shall not make for yourself any carved image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven or above that's on earth, beneath or that's in the water under the earth. Especially verse 5 and 6 now. You shall not bow to them nor serve them. For I am the Lord your God. I am a zealous God. I am a zealous God. Very, very important. Visiting the iniquity of the fathers and the children to the third and the fourth generations of those who hate me. Visiting the iniquity of the father to the third and the fourth generation. But showing mercy to thousands to those who love me and keep my commandments. So as I said to you, we need to understand this verse correctly and what it is really saying here. In the first place, we need to understand that God is a zealous God. You know, but what does it mean? There's two ways to interpret the, the thing that we say God is a zealous God. It, we can interpret it negatively or positively. Negatively means that you are jealous because you are, you are lacking in yourself and someone else has got something that you need and you want but you cannot have it. So you are jealous about it and you want it. But God cannot be jealous like that because God is everything and God has everything and God, is, God does not need anything because He is everything. So God cannot, cannot be jealous about anything that we have or other people have or the universe because everything and we and the whole universe belongs to Him. There's nothing he needs. There's nothing he can add to his life. He's the owner of everything. 
And therefore, the positive way of jealousy is the right way to interpret it. It means that God says that I am the owner of the earth. I am the owner of mankind. I've designed man to live in this special place of sonship. I've provided man a certain way to live in. I've given man certain mandate and certain things. And I am zealous to see to it that he has it and live in it and be it. Because this is my this is my creation. This is the crown of my creation. And this creation of man is is my image and likeness. And I am very zealous about it. How they live and what they do and how they do it. And he has got the right to be zealous about it. Because th that is the right thing. Because, because that, is, that, is, that is rightfully to be like that. Because he's the owner of it. You know, when I bought myself a new car, I need to be zealous about this new car. That no one scratch it, put it in an accident, uh, drive it, you know, and seizing the engine. And Because this is my car. It's serving me. I need it for my life and my work. And, and I, I want to be it in a good condition. I want to service it and wash it and clean it and everything. Because I am jealous upon it. It's not that I desire your car. I've got my car. I'm happy with my car. I don't want your car because this is the one that I have. But I am looking after it and I want it to have the best situation, the best services, the best why. Because it renders then unto me the best situation. That I have the best relationship with this car. It never drops me. It never falls apart and anything at the end of the day. And God, are, God is jealous about us because He wants a good relationship with us. He wants us to be in a good condition, living in a good life, living the good life, living in freedom and not in bondage. And if He doesn't want us to have all these other gods and stuff and because it brings us into a place where it damages and kills the relationship that we have with Him and it kills us at the end of the day. And that is, that is not God's heart. He, he does not have pleasure in, in that. So we understand what does it mean that God is a zealous God. But, but you see, the, the second thing we need to see here is that it says to us that God only visits the sin, the iniquity of the fathers to the second, third and fourth generation of those who hate Him. Of those who hate Him. Then I ask those people coming to see me, but tell me, do you hate God? No! I want to serve Him. I love Him. I'm, I want to commit my whole life to Him and live in that. See, but then this verse is not, it's not, uh, um, it's not about you. It, this is, you are not in here because you don't hate God. Because God only visits the sins of the fathers to the third and fourth generation of those who hate Him. Please be sure, and if you and, and, and if it's and if you don't hate him, the next verse says, but he shows he shows mercy to thousands of those who love him and keep his commandments. That is the other side. That is the best side. That is the side and the normal side. That he shows mercy to thousands of people be, um, who, who love him and who keeps his commandments. Because God wants you to experience his mercy. And His love and His kindness. But you can't experience it outside of a relationship with Him. Yes, He has given it to us. He has blessed us. But it cannot manifest in our world because if we hate Him. And we are not in the right standing with Him. And we don't live the, our life correctly. Because we are the channels of all of this to manifest. And we need to have this relationship, this love relationship and, and live in His commandments, not because it is just laws above us, because it's the best way for us to experience His blessing and His relationship and His mercy in our lives. That's His intention as a zealous father and a zealous God uh, 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 concerning our lives. But He shows mercy to thousands of people because that's His heart to show, show mercy and to give you mercy. Because that is really what his heart is all about. But what then does, then does it mean that he visits the iniquity of the father to the third and the fourth generation? It means the following. That, that, that I say to those people, okay, let's say now you hate God. Really hate God. You despise Him. You hate Him. You, you swear at Him. You just doesn't want to do, have anything to do. This is a serious situation to hate God. I mean, you're not in silence about it. You live it. You speak it. You, you drip with it. Because hate is a very, very deep thing. 
And those people that's like this, if it's now you, then this verse is, is true about you. But when, what does it now mean that if you hate God, He will visit your iniquity to the third and the fourth generation of your children? What does it, what does it really mean uh, 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 in terms of the word? It basically means the following. You know, let me explain to you. When I phone you and I tell you that me and my wife wants to come and visit you 2 o'clock this afternoon, you don't call ADT and call four or five cars and they need to bring extra ammunition and guns, you know, and you park it in front of the house and you and then because you fear that when I come and visit you that I will shoot you, I will kill you, I will destroy you, I will, I will just destruct everything that's on your property. You've, I've never seen a person doing that because we never think that a person, a human being, will come and visit us and do that. Now why do we think that about God? We think when God come and visit us, you know, He will come and show His wrath. He will come and show His judgment. He will bring His anger upon us. He will just, you know, hit us and clap us and, and shift us around. And He will be there as the angry God that shows us His wrath upon us and His judgment upon us. Since when is that in the Bible? You don't even think that about man. What about God? We've got no reason to think that God will be like that. Because the word there, visiting, means basically to visit, to attend, to provide, to give heed. To visit with the intention to do good. That is what the Hebrew is saying. To visit with the intention to do good. Since when do God visit someone just to put His wrath upon Him? It's your interpretation from your sin theology. Where you live daily with the thing that God is at anger with me concerning this and this and this and this and He will, he will do this and this and this and, and, and it's rough will just manifest upon me. Yes, I believe in the rough of God people. It's not the issue. But this is not where the rough of God fits into. God says I will visit your generation unto the fourth generation. He doesn't say I will visit with rough. He said I will visit them. Visit them meaning the word. I will visit them and doing them good. Because I will observe with care as to their well-being. Because I've got a practical interest in this situation. So basically what it means in plain English is that if you hate God. God says, it's un I am a zealous God. It is not fair that your children, your grandchildren, your, your grand-grandchildren, your grand-grand-grandchildren does not have a fair representation of me. Because they think I am what you present to them, angry, wrathful, evil. And I say it is unfair. The children need to think that I am like that. They need a chance to see that it is not true. I will give them the chance and I will visit them. I will seek ways to visit them, to show them that I'm interested in them, that I care about their well-being. I want to provide for them. I want them not to be like you that hate me. And I want them to turn around and I want to give them a chance to see that they can turn around and they don't need to walk in the mentoring and in the, in the example that you have given them. Because the example of the Father is a very, very strong example. Many people do have problems with God because they think God is like their earthly father. Because the earthly father was supposed to be a representation of the God, the Father. But as we are not perfect representations or even totally wrong and, and screwed representations, we find children that grow up in this and they just, they just live in this anger of ours. They just live in this antagonism and everything that's in our lives. And God says, I'm not pleased about it. I will visit them because I will give them a chance to turn away because you have put them in a situation as young children where you showed them the wrong thing, the wrong representation of my image and likeness. You don't know who you are. You've got issues with yourself. Therefore, you've got issues with me. Therefore, you, you, you're mentoring the issue about me into the next generation and into the second, third and fourth generation. And I will visit them to show them well-being, to show them good and to do them good and to give them a chance of a rediscovering of the goodness of my heart. 
If you want to see if God is good, I believe it's good all day, He's good all the time, go and read my free book, The Father Heart of God, that you will find on my webpage. And you will see that God is good, He's good all the time. He was never anything else than good. And God is a zealous God, and God will visit people that hate Him. He will visit their children unto the fourth generation because He wants to do them good. He wants to turn them around. He wants them to give them an opportunity to see the better in the situation. You see, I want to close down with, uh, with um, Revelation 13 verse 8 that says that a lamp was slain before the foundation of the world. You see, before the fall of man came, uh, there was a price already paid before the foundation of the world. In time, in our world, we were legally accountable, we were legally wrong before God. Hear me clearly, because of sin, mankind. But in God's world, the price was already there. But in time, in our world, the price was not here. And God came in the Garden of Eden. In the, in, the, in the soft wind of the evening to talk with them. He didn't come there with wrath and anger and to destroy them. Why? Because there was no reason. He came to tell them about the price. He told them about the way that we can get out of this whole thing. But we were running and we're running and we were running for 6,000 years till Christ came. He not only demonstrated that He brought the price into our world and still we don't believe the price is paid. It's only paid when you believe it. No, it's paid because He laid down His life. He paid with His life. And still we put question marks over the price that's paid. Still we live in enmity. Still we live with question marks concerning God. While there was no question mark in God's world. In God's world man was innocent from the beginning to the end. Not that we were innocent in our world, but in His world we were because the price was there before the, before the problem came as in the fall of man. And in God's world, God had no reason to accuse man. And God didn't want to accuse man. He wanted to save man. He wanted to, bring, he wanted to bring man back into His world. He wants relationship with us. He wants us to be His temple. He wants us to be the bride of His Son. He wants us to be His sons. He wants us to be His family. That is the original purpose and nothing else. And He's zealous about it and He will not just give it away. He will not just walk away from man. He will just not walk away from any person that even hates Him. He said, you can hate me, but I will not leave your children alone. I will give them a ch chance to see my goodness, to see my heart, so that they can come back to me. Thank you very much.